Why don't we stay in the Pac-12 and shift over to the Notre Dame-USC game? Let's. 48-20 was your final score. My prediction was 38-20 USC. And mine? I, what was your prediction? You didn't pick USC. No, I picked Notre Dame to win outright. I just, I don't, I had them covering like 24-17 lower scoring and could not anticipate the absolute collapse of the USC offense. The defense we know about. The, the offensive first half collapse of USC. Woo! Go on. I, I am just relieved sitting here in this safe space among all the verballerhood that my reverse jinx still, oh, sure. still got it, oh, baby. Oh, sure. Still got it. Locked up USC plus the two and a half. In reality, needed about 32 and a half, Dan. You're right. The USC offense imploded. Five turnovers, three picks from Caleb Williams. They weren't all pretty picks either they were oh. under duress and Caleb Williams trying to make a play and not good good game for Xavier Watts on the Notre Dame side who had two of those picks forced a fumble also recovered a fumble and ran it in for uh six late in the game but no Caleb Williams was far short of expectations in this one he faced more pressure than he has I think through you know, to any point to date here um, in, in this season, he was not able to use his legs to extend plays in the same manner that I think he is accustomed to doing. Notre Dame is a real defense. I was going to say, I attribute that to the fact that Notre Dame is just better yeah. defensively. And we saw the results of that just 199 yards passing for Caleb Williams. Um, of course he made plays. That's what Caleb Williams does, but for an offense that, as you mentioned, I think rightfully a couple days ago, that is built entirely around him when he is not able to go out there and eat in the same manner, that is obviously going to pose some problems. So the combination of turning the ball over, the combination of not having Caleb Williams as his optimal self, obviously created a bit of an opening for Notre Dame. If you did not watch this game, if you just simply were to look at the box score, you'd look at the at the numbers and say, well, Notre Dame didn't do anything spectacular. Notre Dame won this game essentially using its defense as the springboard to create short fields, to put its offense in a situation where they're not backed up at their own goal line, having to win games heroically like they did a couple of weeks ago. This was very much laid out for them on a silver platter. And to their credit, to Marcus Freeman's credit, to Jared Parker's credit, they did what they needed to do to win. This was not rocket science. They were able to run the ball. They were able to make some throws. Sam Hartman did not need to go out there and win the game with his arm, but he made some throws when he had to. The defense stepped up and put the offense in a really good situation. And if you're a Notre Dame fan, this was a breath of fresh air, perhaps a week too late, Dan. But sure. that being said, you'll take the win over the biggest rival any way you can get it. Um, I don't know from afar speaking as a Notre Dame fan whether the talking point will be that Notre Dame got its act together went out there and drilled USC by 28 points or if the talking point is going to be USC collapsed and the number 10 team in the country against one of its biggest rivals on the road look pedestrian my hunch is the my hunch is the latter is what people will be talking about more so than a two loss team knocking off the USC Trojans. But um, at least from my vantage point as a Notre Dame fan, this was this was a welcome breath of fresh air after three weeks of being on pins and needles at night. Yes. And look, this, this goes back to like, you're never as bad as your worst day. You're never as good as your best day. And so that's, I guess, why I felt pretty good about Notre Dame, that they're still like built to beat a team like USC, especially at home. And I think the story, you ask, you ask what the story is, right? Notre Dame riding the ship and looking much more competent on both sides of the ball than they have been, or USC collapsing. I think it's USC. USC was undefeated. Even though people knew that this was a flawed USC team coming in, the, the heights of Caleb Williams and the nature of USC's recent games going to, what, triple overtime against Arizona, you know, playing closer than they should have against ASU and Colorado, letting Colorado back into that game. I think the, this was like anticipated from USC. Like this isn't a USC that could keep up what it was doing on the field these past few weeks. And Notre Dame was right place, right time, right kind of team. And you should have gone with your gut. 
early on the season, your your messages to me were like, Notre Dame could just bully USC. And yeah. I don't think it's going to be close. That was like two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. And you just, you're a, you, you run hot at this campfire, Ty. And you are- I'm starting to think that my picks, I'm starting to think that there is a real reverse jinx situation going on this year. I, I try though, Ty. I like, I actively on the preview, I think I'm having a pretty decent year. I haven't run the numbers, but like I actively say like, Ty, I don't do this as a reverse jinx. Do you actually think USC is going to be on the road the way that they've been playing beat Notre Dame? And you said, absolutely. No question in my mind, double digits. My, my comment to, to you and others has been, I have tried the logic method when it comes to making my picks <laughs> and that doesn't work. So right. let's just pick with raw emotion and see what happens. And I still got it wrong, but at least I, at least I got to witness a win. An so, easy okay. win can season. I ask you, can I ask you a question? About Notre Dame moving forward, obviously this is not a team that's going to go to a four-team playoff, um, having lost twice the teams that they lose to and the teams ahead of them. But Notre Dame-wise, this is a team that they didn't kick USC's ass in that Sam Hartman through for 400 yards. He essentially had two big plays, one of which was a beautiful, it was like yep. a deep post to Chris Tyree for a touchdown. Audric Estime, it was, it was workmanlike, but he wasn't busting 70-yard runs. Does this give you hope that, Notre Dame can be more complete than they've shown this month or this past, you know, three or four weeks moving forward. Does it give me hope? Yeah. Against the better teams left on their schedule. I don't have it in front of me. Who do they have? I know they have Clemson left. Yeah. I mean, Clemson's the game that, that I think is, is obviously one that's going to pose an issue. Clemson's front is not going to be USC's front. Right. So that, that one to me, I think will ultimately be the bellwether for whether or not this project is back on the tracks or not. But um, Notre Dame also has a game against Pitt, which Pitt mm-hmm. won this evening yeah. over Louisville in a rather easy fashion. The rest of the way, it's not exactly um, a murderer's row. Wake Forest and Stanford to close out the season. Right. Wake Forest not looking amazing. this. Week. No, Wake Forest lost to Virginia Tech this week. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, the the... Yes. Does it give me hope? Of course it gives me hope. This was a big win. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it's also not lost to me. This was USC's defense and USC's defense is uh, nothing special. I mean, was it three year. first half picks as well? It wasn't just the defense. No, I mean, it, it was a complete effort for Notre yeah. Dame. And I think that is what, especially against a good team, that is what fans have been waiting for and, and been hoping for, you know, long way to go, but I do, I do feel very very much comforted by the fact that the defense, at least the defensive front was able to contain Caleb Williams in the manner that they did. That was one thing I did not expect. By the I way, thought he would do a lot better back half of USC schedule in the back half of their season. Dude, they're a mess. It's USC's tough. kind of like you, you pay Lincoln Riley nine or $10 million. You're not able to build a defense. You're not really able to build an offense week to week that has an identity beyond Caleb Williams. Just like, buying time can and I, making a plus plays can i read the schedule off it's a low key mess continue it's not a low key mess it's a well, it's now a, it's it's out in the open yeah utah at home next week then at cal which is a crazy sandwich spot before washington at home then they go on the road to oregon mm-hmm. and then they come back home against ucla all of those games are losable i don't think cal's losable i on the road, I don't spot? think UCLA. No, Cal's not that good. Um, Cal got run over by a safety <laughs> today. All right, all right, fair. 